Hello everyone, welcome back to Code for Teachers. This is Chapter 2, Section 5, Division with a While Loop. So this is going to be the second section of our lesson on loops, and we're following up from multiplication with a for loop. And in that section we learned that multiplication is repeated addition. Well, if multiplication is repeated addition, is division repeated subtraction? If you think about the long division algorithm that uh, I learned when I was in school and that I still see being taught in most uh, math programs, one of the confusing things about it is that it kind of obfuscates what division actually is. What we do is we get the quotient of, of a division problem by multiplying time and time again. Um, we do a little bit of subtraction, but really we don't, it doesn't, become clear exactly what a quotient is. But by doing this computationally, it becomes very clear. So let's think about multiplication first, and let's think about it in terms of the number line. So let's take the problem 5 times 3. Um, and we're starting from 0. And if we think about walking the number line, do we know how many steps we're going to take? Well, we're going to take 5 steps. Right, that's five times. And how large are the steps? Well, they're three. So we know where we begin, we know how large our steps are gonna be, and we know how many steps we're gonna take. What we don't know in a multiplication problem is our end point, and that's what the product is in a multiplication problem. So if we do two, three, four, five, there's our end point, 15. So that's our, the product is the answer of our multiplication problem. Now let's think about this in terms of division. It's a little bit different. Let's do 15 divided by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is we're going to break 15 up into three sized chunks. And what does that look like? So we know our starting point. We know that's 15. Uh, do we know our end point? We actually do. It's 0 because we're not going to go past 0 in our chunking up of the number line between 15 and 0. Um, when we know how large our steps are going to be, they're going to be of size 3. That's what the uh, divisor is. What we don't know is how many steps we can take. So the quotient is a count of how many times we can subtract from our start point uh, towards 0 without going past 0. And then whatever's left, that if there's a little bit where we can't take another step, that would be the remainder. So 15 divided by 3, our quotient should be 5. And sure enough, we can take 1, 2, three, four, and five steps um, towards zero without going past it if they're size three. So let's think about program design. Um, because we don't know how many times we're going to loop, uh, that's why the while loop is useful. So we're going to take two numbers, x and y. And just like we created a product variable, we're going to create a quotient variable, again, initialized to zero. And then here's that while loop. While x is greater than 0, subtract y from x. We also have to add 1 to the quotient every time. Uh, otherwise, we'll end up with an infinite loop. OK, let's take a look here. So we have our boilerplate, just comments, no code. And we need to define our dividend and divisor. So let's use x and y, x equals 15 and y equals 3. I have these comments here just for clarity, but you don't need them in your code if you don't want them. And we do need a quotient variable initialized to 0. Uh, so now we need our loop, and we know it's going to be a while loop. So now we need a condition. What's our condition going to be? Now you might think it's going to be something like uh, while x minus y is greater than or equal to 0, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be subtracting y from x, right, as long as we can, getting towards 0. But we can't make that our test. Um, we can't say while x is greater than 0, um, because we have to do the test to make sure the subtraction is safe before we actually do it. So our test is actually going to be while x minus y is greater than or equal to 0. And we'll say 
once we've done that test, we know that the subtraction is safe, we actually then perform the subtraction, x minus equals y. So we've taken a y size chunk away from our dividend, but we have to increment our quotient. Having done so, we know that we can take another step towards zero. So we have to add one to our quotient, quotient plus equals one. And then we're going to print quotient. Let's run that and see what we get. Awesome. And I wanna just take a moment on this condition and why we have to do it this way, because it might not be clear. You might think, well, if we're just heading towards zero, why don't we just test x to see if it's greater than or equal to zero? Well, let's try that. So let's try while x is greater than or equal to zero. So while that's true, we're gonna subtract y from it and add one to the quotient. It seems like it should work. But in fact, we get the wrong answer. We get six, and why is that? Because, because we're not doing the test, um, rather, instead we're just checking to see if x is greater than or equal to zero, it runs one extra time. So you think about this, um, we're subtracting y from x, right? So we do that five times, and on that last time, it's while x is finally equal to zero which means that on this next, that sixth run through the loop, this test passes, and the loop is gonna run one more time. And actually what x ends up being equal to at the end of our loop entirely is negative three, because it runs that one extra time. If you wanna see this in a little bit more clarity, you can do this, print x. And you can see what x is equal to every time through the loop. Right? So it starts, our first time is 15 minus 3, 12, 9, 6, 3, 0, then negative 3. And you can see also, if we count these lines, right, that it ran six times. So that's why we have to do the test to make sure that the subtraction will be greater than 0, not that x itself is. So we have to keep it while x minus y is greater than or equal to 0. If we run this now, we still get to see it work if we keep that print statement in there, but then our quotient is correct. Um, putting print statements inside of loops is a really powerful way of explaining things to students. I don't put it in my code just to make it clear what the operation is, but I would encourage you to show your students how to do this. All right, let's think about lesson design. The code itself isn't enough. We have to think about how we structure this into a meaningful lesson. There are lots of opportunities for this here. Um, one of the things that I've done intentionally is build in some weaknesses to the program or opportunities to explore further. Uh, for example, we haven't gotten the input dynamically from the user. We've learned that skill already and we can introduce it into this program, um, these programs rather, the multiplier and the divider, and kind of accumulate, accumulate our skills. Negative numbers are also not going to be handled well by these two programs. It's possible to modify these fairly simply using some conditional statements to handle negative numbers, but we haven't done them yet. So I would encourage you to explore that with your students. Could we write a multiplication loop for more than ter two terms? Could we do three times five times 12 or something like that? Um, is there an easy way to demonstrate the remainder inside of our division algorithm? Uh, there is. And then what about exponentiation? If multiplication is repeated addition, shouldn't exponentiation be repeated multiplication or repeated repeated addition? So is it possible to write a loop or maybe a couple of loops nested one inside the other that will produce exponentiation? Um, these kinds of explorations really get at conceptual understanding of math rather than just being able to follow an algorithm and get the right answer. And it's this kind of exploration that uh, computational math really, really excels at. And my hope is that equipped with Python programming as a tool, uh, you and your students can explore some of these ideas in a new and exciting way. All right, that's it for this chapter. Uh, again, 
feel free to leave a comment here, leave some feedback on my Twitter at mttaggart, and um, I keep writing about edtech at theforeverstudent.com, and the code for this project, as well as my others, is available on GitHub under the username mttaggart. I'm Michael Taggart. Thanks for watching Code for Teachers.